So all of the things that we were talking about earlier, all of the things that make communities, I've been looking at those as community managers, as journalists, and think, well, what kinds of communities are there in our market, so to speak? Because a market and a community is a very different thing. What kind of communities are there, and how can we service those communities? Um, to help you with this, the, the next slide has got a diagram called the Conversation Prism, which is also in the bookmarks. This is from Brian Solis. And this is just a list of lots of different platforms on the web, blog platforms, um, social bookmarking services, wikis, music sharing, document sharing, video and so on. And if you're looking at online communities, this is a good way to kind of map it out and think about where you might find most communities. And the, the actual logos are by no means exhaustive, but the categories give you a starting point. So, some advice from, from various literature about what's, what works with communities. Blogs, I mean, you probably know about the importance of comments. Um, for, for me, a, a, a good blog post in terms of <coughs> community and, and conversation is rough, is unfinished. You know, I kind of think of it as, as having rough edges that people can, can grab onto. You know, if it's all smooth, then people kind of fall off and slip off, there's nothing to grab onto. So if it's rough edges, that works for me. And, and my experience with my own blog is, is that's when it works in terms of comments. Another thing I've, I've experienced is, rather than write one kind of long document, um, and this work, works with government consultations as well, you break it down into individual questions. So there was an example, um, the, the Department for Culture, Media and Sport did a consultation about the future of the regional press. And he had a list of about 12 different areas he wanted to cover. And I think we did one blog post, I think it was Alex Lockwood actually wrote it for Beyond My Journalism and Blog, which was kind of a broad yeah. post about it and said, you know, contribute to this, what are your opinions? And I don't think, I mean, it might mean one comment. So what we did then was we do, do a different blog post for each of the different areas, so it's much more specific. And the conversation I know was, was in, in the difference could be more than significant. Kind of really engaged, really informed. There's people from yeah, yeah, uh, the local yeah, government association, yeah, people from Ofcom, all kinds of people in quite senior positions and people who are working in newspapers all contributed to these very specific individual blog posts. So you're giving people entry points. Exactly, yeah. So it's saying this is your area of interest yeah. rather than the regional press. But for example, one of them was the role of local authorities in the regional press. So should they publish newspapers and so on and so forth. Um, and, and, and a more broader example is Big City Talk. Um, so a big city plan talk in Birmingham, which was again a public consultation from the local council about the city centre and the development of the city centre. And John Bowes, Steph Lewandowski, and some other people um, <coughs> took that document, wrote it in plain English, and broke it up into effectively individual blog posts. So instead of one long PDF document, they had effectively lots and lots of blog posts so that people can comment on individual bits and they've got loads of comments, really well informed um, because there was that ability. What's really curious is that when you submit a response to these consultations, they ask you to number the paragraphs for, for precisely that reason that when they're discussing it, they want to be able to say, if you look at paragraph 17, um, Paul Bradshaw makes this point to it. But they don't actually provide that facility for the people themselves contributing to the consultation. But I think that's starting to change. Um, images and video groups. There's, there's a great quote here from Sarah Hartley from the Manchester News. She's going to be popping in in five weeks. Um, she's now at the Guardian. And um, <coughs> she was at that. Um, she was at the event. Talk about local. Yeah. Um, she emphasises really the importance of not claiming ownership of the photo group, 
of contributing to it as a news organisation <coughs> and <coughs> kind of just having that dialogue and asking for, for permission, even if people have published their photos on Flickr or the Creative Commons licence that includes commercial use for example, and we're going to talk more about all that sort of stuff in week seven. But um, even if they've done that, it just it's just good con good community management really to be to be saying to people, do you mind? And then you've got social networks. A number of newspapers, the Telegraph, the Sun, and the Express have all got their own social networks. The Guardian have kind of got they've got the technology of a social network and they've got the beginnings of one. I think it's Plurk, not Plurk, Plurk. That we use. Trinity Mirror, I think, use Pluck as well. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, the Guardian have got, you've got clipping, haven't you? And you've got profiles, and, and you would expect them to, to build on that and develop it more in that direction. But then other organisations, including the Guardian and some of these organisations, have got social networks, have uh, got presences on other social networks. So the Birmingham Post have a LinkedIn group. BBC have your say around <coughs> seasoning 12 seconds quick. The, the big reason for that with the BBC is obviously they can't seem to be seen to be skewing the market by favouring any one particular platform. So when they do anything like this, they've got to do a number to kind of share the link. A number of newspapers have got Flickr groups. The Liverpool Post did a, did a, a photo of book out of their flipping group on the uh, Liverpool being the capital of culture. The Guardian, um, which I've, I've got a copy in my office if anyone wants to look at it, a uh, message to Obama, where they asked people to put a picture of them, them holding their message to Obama, um, and so on and so forth. And then the, most newspapers have got YouTube channels as well. Moving on, how many of you have heard of Dunbar's number? <coughs> a couple, yeah. This is kind of one of those classic things that's often referred to. Um, sometimes it's not necessarily understood properly. My coffee's going cold, so it's <laughs> <laughs> This is it's well worth reading Dunbar's study. He looked at all kinds of communities. Um, he looked at primate communities and it's been said that this kind of applies as well to military groups and so on and different organisations and the idea was that he said cognitively, mentally, the maximum number of people you can sustain meaningful relationships with is 150. It's probably much, much lower because even at that level, I think he was saying you, you're spending 40% of your time just maintaining those relationships. That's that, you know, you've got to eat and sleep and do other things and the other 60% of the time. So, this is where Dunbar's number comes from. It's, it's often referenced when people talk about online communities. Um, what's interesting is that I've got quoted from Dunbar's research where he says, a coalition's effectiveness, a group's effectiveness is directly related to the amount of time its members spend rooming each other, because this is what chimpanzees do. It's it? like SimCity. Sorry? Like SimCity, where you had to uh, socialize with your friends, otherwise... Oh, do you? You know, the game. The Sims. Yeah. I know yeah. SimCity, yeah. Sim City. Last time I played it, it was just cities. Yeah, now it's the Sims. Little Beatles. Really. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't born back then. Uh, I don't spend that much time dreaming anyway. And that's uh, that kind of reminds me of that theory of the of the six people, you know, that at uh, any given time bet between you and any other person in the world there are exactly six, six degrees. Six degrees of separation. Yeah. yeah. One of the first uh, the social network that was big before Friendster, I think it was called Six Degrees. Six Degrees was one of, us, one of the first social networks. Um, so yes, yeah, so in the larger degree, the more time individuals devote to grooming the members of their coalitionary clique. So in other words, you know, if, if, you, if you translate that to, um, to what we're doing, what you're doing, you know, it's about time spent meeting people in your community, going for drinks, emailing, um, sharing photos, whatever. 